This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Good evening, boxing fans, and welcome back to the latest in the top 10 by decade ranking experiment. Here in part 15, our focus is on the flyweight division. And as always, we will be utilizing Ring Magazine's rich archive of historical rankings in order to try and objectively determine the top 10 flyweights from each decade. Ring Magazine began doing annual rankings for the flyweight division way back in 1924. So for our purposes here, we're going to begin with the first full decade with a complete data set of rankings, the 1930s. At the conclusion of 1930, these were the top rated flyweights according to Ring Magazine. Midget Walgast is the top name on the list, so he will receive 10 points. Next up is Frankie Kid Anselm, and he gets 9 points. We continue allocating points in this fashion until we reach the 10th name on the list, Jackie Harmon, and he receives 1 point. There were 10 names on this list, but sometimes it's 11 and sometimes it's more. But we are only concerned with the top 10 names on any year-end list. If we go ahead and do this for every year from 1930 through 1939, the final result looks like this. Midget Wolgoss topped the list with 50 points, and he was considered the best of the class for five consecutive years. Jackie Brown was second best with 43 points, and in sixth place we have Peter Kane, and he also finished as a top 10 bantamweight in the 40s. So that's two top 10 finishes for Kane. Moving on to the flyweights from the 1940s, Jackie Patterson finished with an impressive 79 point total, and he was considered the best at the conclusion of seven out of eight years. For fourth place Little Dato and sixth place Peter Kane, this was their second consecutive decade as a top 10 flyweight. So that's two top 10 finishes for Dato and now that's three top 10 finishes for Kane. And it's also the second top 10 finish for 10th place Sammy Reynolds, who also finished as a top 10 bantamweight from the 1940s. Then looking at the 1950s, Pascual Perez had the highest score with 60 points, and he was considered the best of the class for five consecutive years. Tied for fourth place is Dato Marino, and that is his second consecutive decade as a top 10 flyweight. And tied for sixth place is Leo Espinoza, and that's the second top 10 finish for him, as Espinoza also finished as a top 10 bantamweight from the 50s. Then in the 1960s, Hone Kingpatch topped the list with 51 points. For Kingpatch, this was his second consecutive decade as a top 10 flyweight. And the same can also be said for Pascual Perez and Ramon Arias. All three of those guys finished as a top 10 flyweight in both the 1950s and the 1960s. So that's two lists for each of those three. Moving ahead to the 1970s, Miguel Canto topped the list with an impressive 66 point total. Canto was considered the best for five consecutive years and he was viewed as a top 10 flyweight for eight consecutive years. In second place, Betulio Gonzalez had an impressive 61 point total of his own. And for Charche Chinoy, this was his second consecutive decade as a top 10 flyweight under this scoring. Now looking at the 1980s, we have a tie for first between Sat Chitalata and Jungkook Chang. They both had 58 points. Chang was never considered the best at the conclusion of any of these years, but he was considered among the best for seven straight. And while Chitilata was considered the best at the end of five years, he was viewed as top 10 for six straight years, but at the end, they accumulated the same score under this scoring method. In the 1990s, Yuri Arbakakov had the highest total with a solid 60 points. And then in second place, we have Mark Johnson with 42 points. This is the second list for Johnson, who also finished as a top 10 junior band and weight from the 1990s. And for Sat Chitalata, this was his second consecutive decade finishing as a top 10 flyweight. 
Moving on to the double O's, Pongsaklek Wangjankum had a stellar 83 point total. For third place Omar Narvaez, he was also a top 10 junior bantamweight in the current decade. For sixth place Victor Chinian, he was also a top 10 junior bantamweight from the double O's. And Malcolm Tanako also currently stands as a top 10 junior bantam from the current decade. So that's two lists total for Narvaez, Darchinian, and Tunaka. And then for Nonito Donaire, this is his third top 10 finish. Donaire was a top 10 bantamweight and a top 10 junior featherweight, both from the current decade. And now even though the current decade is not yet complete, through the end of 2017, the list looks like this. Marutai Ntalani currently tops the list with 41 points, and Brian Valoria is right behind him with 39. For Juan Jankum, this is his second consecutive list as a top 10 flyweight right now, but the current decade isn't over yet, so we will just have to wait and see how the next two years play out. Regarding the most dominant decade for a flyweight under this scoring system, it's Wong Jankum from the double O's, Patterson from the 40s, and then Kanto and Gonzalez both from the 70s. We have some high point totals here from various flyweights throughout the decades. There were nine flyweights who finished in the top 10 multiple decades. Four of those nine finished first in one of those decades, and the standout here once again seems to be Juan Jankum. And if we add up all the totals of all the decades we covered here today, the final list of best flyweights since 1930 under this scoring system looks like this. Again, it's Juan Jankum. He has the highest point total here with 103 points. So going forward with the ranking experiment, we have just two weight classes left, and then I was originally going to do individual decade episodes, but instead, after I finish the next two weight classes, I'm going to jump right into the grand finale, the top 100 boxers under this scoring system, which will include point totals from every division Ring ever did year-end rankings for, including some divisions in decades that I haven't actually covered yet, which is mainly just the 1980s cruiserweights, and then data from some isolated newer weight classes where we only had a year or two's worth of data to work with, and then all of the stuff Ring did between 1924 and 1929, which I haven't covered yet. All of that will be included in the Top 100 Grand Finale. And then after the Grand Finale, instead of doing individual episodes for each decade, I'm just going to do one long summary episode instead where we calculate the best boxers under this scoring criteria from the 1920s, the 1930s, all the way through the current decade, and we will also do a quick recap of the highest score totals for each of the 17 weight classes. So we have two weight classes left, then it's the top 100 grand finale, and then we'll close the series out with a summary overview episode. So we're at the final stretch here, it will probably take me a few weeks to finish this all up, but most of the data has now already been gathered, and I'm looking forward to seeing the final tallies in the grand finale. I can't lie, I really am looking forward to seeing this, and I hope you're looking forward to it too. Thanks for watching everyone, look forward to future installments, and have a great night.